Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and today we'll be exploring the ultimate experience of inner terror, The Brood, 1979. David Cronenberg's 1979 psychological body horror film, The Brood, starred Oliver Reed, Samantha Eger, and Art Hindle, and was written and directed by Cronenberg. He wrote the screenplay after his own tumultuous divorce, intending it to be a study on the shattered marriage between a husband and wife who share a kid, and cast Eger and Hindle as loose facsimiles of himself and his ex-wife. Despite the inclusion of science fiction elements, he later stated that it was his lone picture that most epitomized a classic horror film. The Brood is another early Cronenberg classic that lays bare to all the themes and motifs that would later be replayed in so many of his other films, like Dead Ringers, the profoundly controversial Crash, and even the more commercial and conventional remake of The Fly. And it only adds to this batch of blissfully bloody body horror. Because of his early horror films such as Shivers, Rabid, Scanners, and Videodrome, all of which were made on much smaller budgets, and all of which pushed the boundaries for the horror genre, they all took risks to deliver brutally brilliant and highly original visceral cinema, making David Cronenberg synonymous with the genre of body horror. The plot of The Brood centers on Frank, Art Hindle, and his daughter Candace. His wife Nola, Samantha Egger, has been transferred to the Somafree Institute to be treated by renowned and charismatic yet controversial psychiatrist Hal Raglan, played by the excellent Oliver Reed. This synopsis itself gives us goosebumps in anticipation for the true horror that is real and a lot more plausible, like psychological terror, instead of things like ghosts and zombies. But then again, that's just how we feel, but we want to know what you think. So with that, let's see how this film does on the terror front. Before we get into today's video though, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now then, let's begin. No, no. They're waiting for you. The Brood, 1979. David Cronenberg's third, above them all, science fiction horror film is more restrained than Shivers or Rabbit, focusing on a single, unhappy family rather than a whole community gone wild. Frank Carveth is a man whose marriage is on the verge of falling apart. Nola, his wife, decides to seek psychiatric help. At the same time, he fights for the custody of his five-year-old daughter Candace. He is legally embattled against his deeply mentally disturbed wife, played by Samantha Eger who plays full-blown creepy lunatic like nobody else's business in this film. She is currently imprisoned, well, kind of, at the secluded Somafri Institute, where the ominous Dr. Raglan practices a controversial experimental psychological technique on his patients called psychoplasmics. Raglan's technique of psychoplasmics encourages patients who have experienced extreme mental trauma to express repressed emotions by physically manifesting them on their bodies, with uncomfortable and unsettling effects. Interestingly enough, psychoplasmics is actually similar to gestalt therapy, without the things growing on you part of it, of course. Frank is not allowed to meet Nola at the hospital, but Candace is. One day, he discovers bruises on Candace's body after she spent the weekend with her mother at the hospital, and is compelled to act on it. He is already suspicious of his wife's treatment, and is concerned about her rising instability. So, like any normal person, he begins investigating Raglan and his methods in an attempt to discredit him. And, well, this part is a little not expected, but we understand the emotions. He tries to prove that his wife will never get better in an attempt to win full custody of his daughter. When Frank threatens Raglan, he begins to escalate his sessions with Nola in order to settle the situation swiftly in an attempt to safeguard his patient. Not precisely what he ended up doing, but hey, at least the visuals are great. He learned that Nola was physically and verbally abused by her self-pitying alcoholic mother during the therapy sessions. In contrast, her codependent alcoholic father neglected her out of shame and denial. Meanwhile, Frank interrogates Jan Hartog, a former Somafri patient dying of psychoplasmic-induced cancer, in order to disprove Raglan's methods. While Candace is left with her maternal grandmother, Juliana, for the evening, the two spend their time looking at old photographs. Juliana later tells Candace that Nola was regularly hospitalized as a youngster and had bizarre, unexplainable welts on her skin that the doctors just couldn't figure out. Later, Juliana hears strange noises coming from her kitchen the day that Nola is in therapy with Raglan, recalling a particularly difficult memory concerning her maltreatment as a youngster. When she goes to investigate, Juliana is gruesomely bludgeoned to death and murdered by what appears to be a dwarf in a red coat. Candace sees the killer, but is too scared to tell anyone, including her father, what she's seen. Candace has obviously been traumatized, but she is undamaged in any other way. After the burial, Barton, Juliana's ex-husband, tries to reach Nola at Somafree, 
but Raglan refuses to let him in. A drunken phone call from Juliana's house interrupts their conversation, insisting that they both travel to Sommerfree to see Nola. Meanwhile, Frank asks Candace's teacher, Ruth Mayer, to dinner to discuss Candace's school performance. Frank leaves Candace in Ruth's care when he goes to consult Barton. While he's out, Ruth receives a phone call from Nola. She taunts Ruth and tells her to stay away from her family after recognizing her voice. She suspects her of having an affair with Frank, even though they were just talking. At the same time, Frank discovers that Barton has been murdered by the same malformed dwarf child that we saw earlier. This time, Frank discovers the dwarf-like creature for himself and battles with it until it collapses and dies. The dwarf-like creature's corpse is then sent for an autopsy, since it is a creature like no other. During the autopsy, the doctor observes that it appears unformed in many respects, and more intriguingly, he was born without a navel. The dwarf-like creature's autopsy also reveals a number of strange anatomical anomalies, including the fact that it is asexual, apparently colorblind, naturally toothless, and because of the lack of navel, no known means of natural human birth. Upon being questioned, Raglan grudgingly confesses that Barton's death coincides with his sessions with Nola, relating to their respective issues after the murder report makes the headlines. With the exception of Nola, he closes Somerfree and sends the rest of his patients to municipal care. Hartog informs Frank about the shutdown of Somerfree. One of the patients forced to leave Somerfree, Mike, informs Frank that Nola is now Raglan's queen bee, in charge of several disturbed children in the attic. When Candace returns to school, two dwarf children attack and murder Ruth in front of her classmates, before fleeing with Candace to Somerfree, with Frank hot on their tail. Raglan is now forced to reveal the truth about the dwarf children of Frank when they arrive at Somerfree. The dwarf children are the unintended consequences, or physical manifestations, of Nola's psychoplasmic sessions. Her rage over her abuse was so intense that she parthenogenically bore a brood of children who psychically responded and act on the targets of her anger, but Nola remained utterly unaware of their actions. They make a plan where Raglan will break into the brood's chamber and rescue Candace assuming that Frank can keep Nola calm and avoid upsetting the children. Cronenberg drew lines almost exactly from the real-life arguments that he had with his ex-wife for authentic conversation in this film, and it really does add content to the film. It also makes us feel really concerned about his used-to-be marital life. Later on, he had remarked that the plot's familial tensions could be classified as ordinary melodrama or a disease of the week scenario, but his serious approach to such violent images still stands out among other horror films of the time. When Frank approaches Nola, as the film is beginning to reach its conclusion, the hideous sights reach their pinnacle. The audience has only seen minor sores, a giant lymphatic tumor, and deformed offspring up to this point, which is relatively tame for Cronenberg, especially when compared to his previous work's vast effects-driven experimentation. Bubbling stomachs, phallic armpit parasites, you get the gist. We now notice that Eger spends the entire film seated or on her back, as if she were a pregnant animal implanted on the ground. This starts to make much more sense when she shows enormous boils and a delivery sac emerging from her belly when she opens her robe in front of Frank in the finale, evocative of the placental coating that arises from many mammals during labor. Nola bites the sack apart with her teeth, allowing bloody fluid to flow out. She tears the sheath away, revealing her psychoplasmic kid. The notion of Cronenberg's logical, if malformed biology, licking the object clean like an animal mother is both terrifying and inspiring. This scene is both horrible and oddly natural, Despite the fact that the vision is not one of violence or depravity, but rather one of distorted motherhood, censors compelled Cronenberg to edit the sequence due to its visual nature. Interestingly enough, the brilliant, albeit nasty idea of licking the newborn baby's blood was actually given by Samantha Eger herself. When Frank sees Nola giving birth to another child through a psychoplasmically induced external womb, she feels his repulsion and licks the child clean, allowing Raglan to collect Candace. Another disturbing fact was that the fetuses shown that were linked to Eger's body were in fact packed condoms. When the brood awakens, Raglan is killed. Nola threatens to kill Candace rather than lose her. This leads the brood to pursue Candace, who is hiding in a closet. Even though she is inside the closet, the brood breaks down the door and attempts to take her with it. During that time, Frank strangles Nola to death out of desperation. Without its mother's telepathic link, the brood is unable to survive and ultimately dies before they can kill Candace. Frank returns to his car with his very disturbed daughter, and the two promptly depart. Two tiny lesions, a germinal stage of the phenomenon observed by Nola, appear on Candace's skin as the father-daughter duo sit in the quiet. Ah! 
Why should you watch The Brood? What we have here is a horror film revolving around a dramatic divorce and custody dispute running through it, like a vein. The Brood tackles very tough issues in the year it was released. It approaches not only divorce and custody battles, but also women's mental health. It is refreshing and horrific both simultaneously, which makes it even more thrilling. Cronenberg's stunning take on graphic horror in the film also compels you to think, while at the same time enabling you to enjoy it. It has a cult classic reputation, which it has rightfully earned. The Brood has some fantastic imagery surrounding the children, and Cronenberg definitely shows how to create horror, even within a limited budget. This limited budget also allows him to cast Reed and Egger, but no actor could save the Brood children's shabby appearance. If they're in the wrong company, their snow suits or blood-soaked pajamas can make them giggle unintentionally. On The Brood, composer Howard Shore produced the first of many scores for Cronenberg, conjuring strings from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, which mirror the sensations of violence on screen. Shore's music would subsequently become a significant indicator of the seriousness of Cronenberg's work. It added substance to the storyline and gave the visuals the added push of terror that they needed. The Brood is a thinking horror fan's film that has just as much to offer today as it did when it was initially released, with plenty of horrors, some genuinely startling scenes, and an engaging story arc. It's all about the gross out, and it's also a genuine horror film. The madness and its physical manifestations will really make your skin crawl in a way that only horror fans can understand. While Cronenberg's other works, such as Rabbit and Shivers, were more terrifying on a bigger scale, The Brood feels more intimate and features horror like never before, and will definitely leave you with goosebumps. Altogether, The Brood is a film that will definitely stick with you. It boasts a good cast, a good score, and a great look with a low-budget horror flick. This isn't always the case, but Cronenberg definitely delivers. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching.